Hello everybody and welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful two-tiered cascading pearl cake for a wedding that we had at the bakery. So this is a pretty fairly easy technique to do. So this is probably a level two or an intermediate level, I would say, design. So if you have a little experience, um, I think this would be one that you could tackle. So we're going to go ahead and get our pre-filled and crumb-coated cakes. Well, they are chrome coated, so we're going to get the final coat, I should say, of buttercream on both of our tiers. This was a six inch and an eight inch cutting cake. Now, this is using my American buttercream recipe, crusting American buttercream, that I will add a um, card and probably try to remember to put a link in the description of this video for where you can see how to make that buttercream along with the recipe. And we're doing the same thing for both cakes. We just need a good clean surface to add our pearl dragées to. And after I have each one of these buttercreamed, put them back in the refrigerator so that the buttercream can firm up a little bit. You could attach your dragées right away, um, but the way that I attach them, the way that I find is easiest for me, is easier if your cakes are chilled. So you can chill them for 20 minutes in the refrigerator or 10 minutes in the freezer. I find that once you have your second tier, um, butter, the buttercream on it, the first one is ready to go. And what I did was I flipped the cake upside down and I'm using this Pearl Drage. It's a set. It's a... Um, assortment of sizes that you can find on Amazon. I will link that also. And I separate out the larger ones from the smaller ones. This is a big hint here. I find it so much easier if you start with the small and attach the large after you have your small ones on there. Otherwise, you're trying to get your dragées on there. And what you're doing is the large ones stick in the the small ones. Don't even touch the buttercream to stick. So I start with the small ones. Put some around the bottom. You can use your hand to attach it. You can use brush. You can pour them around the edge and use your brush to brush it up. And what I should have done was let this cake sit out for about 10, 15 minutes before I started attaching these dragées. Because if you work with the condensation that you get when you bring it out from the refrigerator, that's a simple way to attach them. So that is another little hint number two is let your cake sit out for a couple minutes. But there is... Um, parchment paper between the cake and the board on the bottom since that is actually the top so that we turn it right side up if your cake has come to room temperature a little bit you can pop it back in your refrigerator but since this was very cold to begin with I was able to just peel that parchment right off and then we're going to go ahead and touch up our sides and I did go ahead and just um, pull it up from the bottom since I had a little bit of fallout because I was going to do that anyways to blend the top to the bottom tier. Um, so I just used what was on the board just to add it right then and then add some to your top. This is really a very easy technique. It's one of those cakes that has a big wow factor, but when you break down how you do it, it's actually pretty easy. And the top tier, I did put some large ones on there, and I'm just kind of spacing things out. And then I'm just going to set this tier in the fridge while I work on the bottom tier. And yes, I am using my hands on these cakes, so just make sure that you either wear gloves or that you have your hands just clean and dry. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for the bottom tier. Now we're going to put it on our finishing board and I'm going to show you a little trick that I've shown a few times but I don't always show and that is how I insert and mark and insert my supports. I use a star cutter to mark where the five points of, this, of the star are. Try to get that as centered as you can and that is going to mark the five points are where you're going to insert your straws. Now it was a little bit cattywampus but that's okay. Um, since it was just a two tier, it had the support where it needed it. And then I put one straw in, mark the top, cut it down. Then I get the rest of my straws and I line them up to that first straw. 
I put them against a solid surface or which would be the end of my mat and I just use my scissors and I put them on the straw I'm cutting the same height as the original um, guide. We'll call it a guide straw. So that way you know that all your straws are the same height. And then we're just gonna insert them into the cake push them all the way down, and then I like to pull them up a little bit after I've pushed them all the way down. It's kind of like pre-drilling a hole in wood. Um, it makes it so that I can put the top tier on top of those, and the weight of the top tier is going to push that top tier down, so you don't have to worry about getting your fingers in the way. But um, the cake will not obstruct the straws from going all the way down since you've already pushed it out of the way by pushing the straws all the way down to the bottom and then pulling them back up again. And if you need to give a gentle little nudge, you can to push it down. And then I put a skewer down the center. Um, I cut it about two inches shy of the height of the entire cake. I sharpen the end, make sure that it's clean, and then I insert it through the entire cake. And that anchors your top tier on. And then I just fill the hole in the top with just a little buttercream. You can strategically place some drages there if that helps. And then I'm going to fill around in between the two tiers. I like to call it my buttercream caulking. And that is going to fill that gap that you might have. Sometimes you get lucky and your bottom tier is exactly perfectly level and your top tier just fits perfectly on it. But most of the time you're going to have to go back in and kind of fill some, some gaps there. You know, when we used to do um, shell borders on everything, that was how we hid those. But we don't do those all the time anymore. So then that's where your buttercream caulking comes in handy. And then I'm just using some more drages to kind of... Um, Blend the top. You, know, you have the bulk of your dragees on the top of both tiers, but in between the two tiers, I wanted to continue it up just a little bit to give it that cascady look. And then if you're having problems getting your dragees to stick, you can do what I did just there, just spray a little bit of water on there. And then I'm just fine tuning by adding dragees, just one fingertip at a time where I feel like it might be lacking some. And you can add some flowers to this cake. You could make some sugar flowers. You could do fresh flowers. Um, there's quite a few things you could do. You should, could you add some sails, some rice paper or wafer paper sails with some dragees on them, add a little pearlescence. I think that would be really pretty too. But since this was for an order, we just kind of did exactly what they wanted. And there it is all done. I hope that this lighting shows and up close, up close shows a little bit more of that cascading effect that we got from the dragees. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something that you can use. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to Check out my other social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.